Ah, good day fret friends and welcome to part two of this uh, Squire Stratocaster refret. Now, um, I was unable to work yesterday, I, uh, I went to a funeral uh, so I was unable to get into the workshop so as promised in my last video where I said I'll probably show a little bit of a refretting, I, I didn't film any of it. I just wanted to get cracked on this morning so I've got up this morning, I've gone straight in the workshop and I've actually installed the frets. Um, Standard procedure using my Arbor Press adapted to uh, accept pr uh, fret calls. I've gave them a two press. Each fret has, has gone in, been pressed in twice, been pressed with seven and a quarter inch call to get the edges in. I over radius, and then I've gone in again with a nine and a half inch call just to flatten them all out. And I've now I glued them all in with tight bond. Blah 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 blah. Um, I'll show you where we are because now I've now got it all clamped up. And I'm going to clamp it till lunch time, I believe. And there it is, all clamped up, all the frets are in. Uh, I didn't even check for level that much. I just got them in, clamped them down, job done. So we should be absolutely fine with this. Uh, obviously leveling, snipping the edges off, getting all the bevels in there, getting my leveling done and all that will be done later. So uh, not really a fantastic update for you there, but it just shows where I am uh, on that guitar. Just making sure the clamps are all nice and tight. They are, they're pretty good. Uh, absolutely beautiful so they should go in pretty much level um that is really it i can't really tell you any more than that so what i'll do is later on once i get to lunchtime i'm working on something else today once i get to uh get to about lunchtime um i will get the clamps off i'll film taking the clamps off and we'll see exactly where we are make sure everything seems to be seated uh, when seems to have gone in pretty well i'm not expecting any problems but if there are we will obviously sort them out later, so come back in an hour or two and uh, I'll be waiting. And now it is a few hours later and um, you'll see that I've unclamped my neck and I've removed all the tape and the frets are in. I've already snipped the edges, oh, I've just found one I've just missed there. I said I'm, I've snipped the edges, I've snipped the edges on most of them and now I can't find my plier. Here's my plier. Excellent, we'll just nib that one off there. There you go, you get to see how this works as well. Good cutting plier, ground flat edges, nipped off, job done. So, they are the frets, they are seated more or less level, very one or two a bit high in place, especially around the top end, we normally get that. Um, but they all look to be seated absolutely fine. So, any leveling needs to be done will get done using a level beam. We are going to remove the edges, uh, get it right close up to the edge of the um, rosewood fingerboard there. Uh, when, without going into the wood or the lacquer or anything that's on there and then we'll start we'll get the bevel done once the bevel's done it's then that we'll do the leveling I don't no point me doing the leveling then the beveling because once I've done the leveling I do the beveling I'm going to put more scr scratches in there than I need to do the leveling last get the beveling in do the leveling last um, there are little bits of glue residue just where the tape was a little bit wider than it or further away from the fret when it needed to be really easy to clean up I can go with a file I'm going with my pointy stabby thingy my doof there you see that gubbins and that gubbins there get it off with that I can sand it I can file it whatever I need to do um, so really what I need to do now is I'm going to clean all the residue off the back of the neck from the tape I've removed there's a bit on there where the clamp pressed it in a little bit more the next job I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these holes um, as mentioned before I will fill with um, we'll blob some Time bond in there, tight bond, sorry, not tight bond, tight bond in there, and we'll uh, cut off some little bits of uh, cocktail stick and we'll just shove it in the moulds, let it dry, uh, see where we are, cut flush, and if we need to, we'll drop a little bit of, uh, if we've got some wood dust, we'll drop a bit of wood dust in there, a little bit of epoxy, just to uh, tidy it up, and then we can just sand that little bit flat. It doesn't have to be mega flat, but we can get it flat, make sure it's going under the tuner zone and uh, it'll give us a new base for installing the new tuners so really as much as I'm going to do right now because I'm, I'm working this basically I'm working this one uh, because I'm waiting for a decal for the uh, for the other um, fender neck I'm working on. I can't do anything on that that's on hold so I might as well be getting this done who knows we might even have this done by the end of the week and the owner can have it back it's going to be a wonderful thing once it's done. Those new frets look fantastic, uh, but they always do. They don't look brilliant fantastic, but they look, by fantastic I mean they're in right. And I'm looking forward to getting these done. This is going to be fantastic once it's done. With new tuners on there as well. 
Um, it's just going to be a really, really good guitar. So stay tuned for the next part and uh, I'll be back pretty soon, I suppose. Right, with well, it's a snag with this um, Squire refret. Um, I was getting it all clamped up ready to level the frets. As you see, I've done all the edging. You have a zoom in there. Look at these edges, absolutely perfect. Both sides filed right up to the edge, absolutely brilliant. I've also beveled the edges perfectly, all the way down the length, perfectly beveled, all ready for leveling. And I had it on, I had it strapped or bolted to this piece of MDF. I used 30mm MDF to get it all sat straight. And I was just tweaking the truss rod just to get it all straight. And I thought it's not getting straight enough. I've ever to put too many twists in this truss rod to get it straight enough. And I got it more or less right up as tight as it would go. It's a 5mm adjuster on these things. And I was using my 5mm uh, hex wrench, long one. And I thought, I didn't turn this anymore. And then you're thinking, nah, we we'll snap the truss rod. No, absolutely not, not at all. So I thought, you know what I do? I'll remove the truss rod nut from this end and I'll place a washer between the end of the truss rod, the adjusting area, and the nut, giving me more adjustment to tighten. As I was doing that, I was undoing the nut and I was undoing it and undoing it and undoing it and undoing it. And I thought, it's not coming off. It's not moving out, it's not going anywhere. And that's exactly the problem. It's now twisted off and I cannot get it to bite back onto the adjuster. It feels like it's come off. Whether it's because of the angle of this, I don't know. Because you can't get right in there. Maybe I could get a... Uh, I'm just turning it, turning it, turning it and it's not biting anything. And I'm pushing it and turning it, pushing it, turning it, pushing it and it's not biting anything. It's like it's just spinning, 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 spinning like so. You can see what's happening. So I thought, right, I'll undo it. I'll try and pull it out and I'll get it in there and I'll pull it out and I'll undo it. And it's not doing anything and I can't grab it. I can't pull it out. And it's stuck in there and it's not tightening and it's not coming out. So somehow I can't get it out. The only way I'm going to be able to do it is I'm going to have to remove the fingerboard from my neck. And I've already refretted this guitar. There's only one way to do that, and that is I'm going to have to steam it off. Like I did, if you remember the Warwick Bass series I did a couple of years ago, a massive, massive job that was. And I'm going to have to do the same thing with this, it looks like. I'm going to talk to a couple of my Luthier friends. In fact, I'm going to message Nigel Roberts down at leicestershireluthier.co.uk. It's leicestershire-luthier.co.uk. It's a great man, is, is, uh, is Nigel. Nigel Roberts, he's a fantastic bloke. I've been and visited him about four or five times over the years, over the last couple of years. And I love to go down there and sit with him and I could talk all day with him. He's shown me so many good tips. He's given me tools. Always full of great advice. Lovely, lovely man to talk to. So I'm going to call him, see what he suggests. He might say, come down, we'll get the Stumac tool on there and we'll bore that truss rod out and we'll have a look. But as things are, it's looking like I'm going to have to remove. I could buy a new neck, but it means if I buy a new neck, it's going to cost me 60 quid a replacement neck. 15 quid for more fret wire, 10 more hours refretting it, and that's cost me money. Don't want to do that. I would rather spend two days removing this fingerboard, get the sort of truss rod out, then putting the fingerboard back on. Uh, I will remove the fingerboard is we drew, drill two pilot holes, one there where the nut goes, and one up here, right just inside of that first fret, right side of that first fret, and we stick a pin in each, and when we put it back on, we'll know there are two guide holes with a pin in there is where we glue the neck back into and we'll, it'll be seamless here. And we can always send it back to where it ought to be. Anyway, I've done it before, done it on Warwick Base. Uh, it is, unfortunately, a two or three day job, but as the guitar was in my care, it's up to me to put it right. I'm not saying the truss rod was right or wrong or whatever. There's no reason why that should have happened. Uh, I've done nothing untoward. I've not forced the truss rod or anything. Uh, it's just one of those unfortunate instances. and. This is a guarantee with me, if anything goes wrong while the guitar is under my care, or in my care, uh, I will always put it right. Um, so that's it, so what I've decided to do is, I was going to carry on filming, but I'm not going to carry on filming. What I'm going to do is, I'm probably going to end this here, we're, we're at part two now, and I know it's a shorter video than it ought to have been, um, but there's no point in continuing yet until I know what's happening with the truss rod. I really do think it's going to be a... Um, a, uh, 
a truss rod removal. So uh, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. I'll see. I think I'm, what I'm going to stop the video now and I'll decide. Right, I've had another go at this with different size Allen key. I've been gone with a non-metric. I don't know what size it is, but the truss rod is biting on half a turn and then it's slipping off again. So, so there it's biting there. There look, it's trying to, I'll just show you that, it's really, really tight there. Can hardly move it, then it's spinning off. So, basically the thread has knackered on this, on the truss rod. So the problem was with the truss rod. Now it's a good thing the lad's not paid for this. It might, if I can get it back on, It feels like it's on, but it's slipping back off. It's on there because I can't move it. Let's see if we can get it back on, get it to bite. If we can get it to bite, and there it slips off again. I can feel it slipping off. So, I'm going to take it down to Nigel Roberts at Leicester Shaluthia. I think if we bore into here with a Stumac repair kit, we may be able to get that off, recut the thread, and uh, fix that. If not, I'm going to have to remove the fingerboard. So I am definitely going to end this part of the video. This is the end of part two. Uh, the thing is, the guitar came like this. The truss rod would have been redder for knackering. It's an old guitar. Um, end of the day, it's no one's fault. Um, he wasn't to know. I wasn't to know. Um, we'll see what we can do to get it right. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to charge any money for that. I'm going to have to drive down to Leicester. Also at my expense, which I'm prepared to do. Um, and we'll see what I can do. Because if I can keep those frets in that I've put in, I would like to do that. And I can steam this fingerboard off without removing the frets. Um, be absolutely fine. So this is end of part two of this video. Uh, come back in part three and see what we decide to do.